Good morning, everyone. Happy Sabbath. And this morning, I have a little treat for you. And I just want to share, I mean, I do apologize last night for those who do watch um, A Quiet Space. I did do a recording and I had an amazing time with Joy. I shared my testimony also of what happened yesterday and how God brought me joy and hope. Um, I consider doing something later, if time permits me, but I was banned by YouTube from yeah, I was bad for my video. And I was, I, if it was just one song I could have deleted, only two of the songs that we played were allowed to be played. I was blocked because the songs I chose, even though I did not play them, I because I was doing that and it was fine. But those particular song has extra um, prohibitions on them. And I'm not a premium member, so, um, and I don't have special rights to them. So I couldn't upload that video. So I had to delete it. So I do apologize for that disappointment. It was about joy. And how God, I'm going to tell my testimony quickly, how God um yesterday morning, as I went into work, um, as I, you know, as I as I hinted in the devotion yesterday, um, I was going to um have a joyful day, whatever happened after grieving and mourning. And what happened was that um after I I certainly burst, maybe I should share a separate testimony later about that. I think I'll do that to save the time for this morning. Because this morning I'm going to do with you, um, I'm going to you're going to use you as my guinea pig for my it's a narrative piece for nursing home later at two o'clock. So um I'm gonna use you as my guinea pig for devotion. And I will do a little bit more with it. So just stay with me for a few minutes. I was young and very pregnant. I am here and right now I'm very alone, so alone. At first I was a little skeptical, just like Sarah when the angel told Abraham she would have a baby, wondering what on earth was going on. And I really dreaming, or oh, is this so real? <laughs> oh god I was, I was a bit forward for my age though I think a girl of my age should answer back to an angel um that's a bit much I must admit but I was delighted I was delighted to have been chosen by god for such a special task for all of Maybe about five minutes I was happy for. Behold, I am the unmaiden of the Lord. Let it happen to me just as you see. Then I told my mother. Mother, guess what? I've seen an angel and he had a message for me. Me? But she was more concerned about preparing dinner for the men. Mary, bring the oil. Mary? Pass the flower. Mary, just maybe just sit down. What, what are you saying, girl? Just sit down. She was still busy, busy with everyday events than to hear about my angel's message. However, she did stop and listen when I told her about the baby. Baby? Mary, you're not married yet? But mother, it is not going to be Joseph's. <laughs> was their response. That's when I began to realize that while I might be blessed among women, it was a very mixed blessing. Mother lived in disgrace. Father, he wanted to know who the father was. To say he was looking disappointed was an understatement. As they looked in disbelief, I repeated again and again the tidings of the angel. What are you saying, dear? It's blasphemous. The Lord Almighty is responsible for your pregnancy? No, have you lost your mind? What do you mean the Lord Almighty is responsible for your pregnancy? Ridiculous. What am I going to tell Joseph? <laughs> Can you hear the voices of the tone people? They no longer whisper. 
but speak as if I was not even around. She can hear them. Yeah. She won't say who the father is. I bet it's Jacob. He's had eyes on her a long time. He laid more than eyes on her. She should be stoned. It's grace. Adulterous. Her mother says she's hearing voices in her head. She tried to fool. It took more than voices to do that. Ah, maybe she and Joseph was up to Anki Panky, just anticipating the marriage day. I wouldn't blame him. She should be stoned. Our poor father. He's broken his heart. Poor man. She should be stoned. I spend more time by myself in hiding, totally alone. But Joseph came to talk to me today. He looks so sad. Not angry, as I thought he might be. Sad, really, really sad. Sad for himself, for me, for my poor baby. We were engaged. He was struggling. He's a good man, you know, and he really trusts God. But it was a challenge, a challenge to not believe the voices in the marketplaces. I could see he really wanted to believe me. Oh, how I needed him to believe me. He was an older man. He, was he believing his own eyes? Or does he really know who I am? I told him that God had chosen us to be husband and wife and that this child needed him to be his father. Mary, this is a lot you are saying, girl. This is not my child. He turned and walked away from me. I felt utterly abandoned for a moment. It did not felt like God was with me, with us, but more even God abandoning me. I didn't feel so chosen after all. I could not understand why he was had supposedly chosen me for the highest honor ever bestowed on a woman, only to be totally rejected by all around me. It was lonely. I even started to doubt. Imagine. I'm going insane. If it were not for the evidence and the movement of someone growing daily inside me, it became not safe. We were both in grave danger. My father has an occasion to sell some of his own animals recently. And the rumor is spreading that the money was used to buy Joseph silence. Can you believe it? As if we had so much money anyway, or he was, Joseph was a man of integrity. I told my parents that cousin Elizabeth is also having a baby. So father thought it would be wise and safer for me to visit her. I can assist her during her own preparation. After all, she's not exactly young. The angel himself has told me that Elizabeth was pregnant. I hope she will at least understand my situation and believe me. She looked at me and said, Mary, oh, somebody's happy to see me. What a blessing to see you, my dear. How ready I was to hear these words. I had traveled with a caravan down to Judea. My father had supplied me with a donkey. You can imagine Elizabeth's surprise when I arrived. She called me a blessing. Blessing? Blessing be yours and God's peace be with your walls. Isabel couldn't wait to tell me her news. A woman at her age, barren for years and now pregnant and in her sixth month. She was surprised. Surprised to hear that I already knew. Who told you? Who would have thought that an angel would have spread such wonderful gossip? <laughs> I, was, I was then surprised to hear that Elizabeth, husband, Zechariah, I had met Gabriel too. I told her Gabriel came to tell me that I am also to be a mother. Elizabeth, I am to bear the Messiah. Can you believe it? Then Elizabeth winced. I quickly came close to support her. 
Elizabeth said that it was the strongest kick ever. And then something amazing happened. Elizabeth became filled with the Holy Spirit. Mary, my dear, you are blessed among women and blessed is the fruit of your womb. How fortunate I am to have the mother of my Lord come to me. The baby that kicked within me is leaping for joy to hear your voice. First, the angel called me blessed. And now Elizabeth, even her unborn baby had known. Looking at her the beautiful smile on her face, I remembered Gabriel's words, for nothing is impossible with God. I'm bursting with good news right now. I'm dancing the song of my Savior God. God took one good look at me and look at what happened. I am the most fortunate woman on earth. What God has done for me will never be forgotten. The God whose very name is holy set apart from all others. His mercy flows in wave after wave on those who are in awe before him. He bared his arms and showed his strength. Scattering and bluffering the braggarts, he knocked tyrants off their high horses and pulled the victim out of the mud. The starving poor sat down to a banquet. The callous rich were left out in the cold. He embraced his chosen child Israel. He remembered and piled on the mercies, piled them I. It's exactly what he promised, beginning with Abraham and right up to now. But that joy didn't last long. Nine months and I'm pregnant. And to have a ride a hundred miles on the back of a bony donkey. Joseph was too poor to afford a camel. So it's either a donkey or the walk. I felt like a sack of badly loaded cabbages tossed and jolted from one step to the next. I walked as much as I could. But that was slow going because I got tired easily. It took us 10 long days. I could not wait for the rolling to stop. In Bethlehem, we trudged from place to place. Everything full, full to overcrowding. And I was getting more and more desperate knowing my time was just at the door, so near, I could feel it, overlading. An innkeeper's wife took pity on us when she saw my condition. She made her husband sweep out the stable at the back and gave us room here. Fortunately, our flight was not in winter when animals were brought in from the cold. It was empty and with a bit of clean straw, it was not too bad. I was glad of the peace and quiet away from the drinkers around the front. We were settled in. None too soon then the labor pains kick right in. God came to live with us. Can you believe it? Joseph blessed him, did his best to make me comfortable, but he was no midwife. I don't know what I would have done if it wasn't for the innkeeper's wife. She had obviously delivered many babies in her time, and this was just another one to her. A break from routine from her guest at the front, not recognizing that the one she was delivering was the arrival of our Emmanuel, or God with us. God came to dwell with us. To hold a baby, you can... How can words describe this wonder? Every baby is a miracle, but suddenly all the pain, the discomfort, the ordeal vanished as I held him, God with us. It was a miracle. After Joseph and I got married, you see, I still had little fears. Had he done it out of duty? Did he pity me? And how would he react to this child? So when he created him in his arms, I could scarcely breathe. His big callous carpenter hands reached down and took the baby and brought him up to his face. God living with us. 
And then the miracle happened. A look of mingled wonder. Ah, oh, love spread across Josie's face. She should have seen it as he created the child in his hands, weeping as a child. Tears of joy fell without shame and Joseph knelt beside me, put the baby back in my arms and held the two of us in strong embrace. We felt like a family. Me, Joseph, and little Emmanuel, God with us. But how can we really parent God? Nothing can really prepare us for how to care for God living with us. At first I was astonished, but as I listened to his words, I realized that Gabriel had given him his own visit. I realized that God had indeed been with me and had given me what I needed. Joseph knew what the baby had been conceived by the Holy Spirit. He knew that the baby would grow to be the Messiah. He even knew the name by which the child is to be called Jesus, Emmanuel, God with us. God with us. You are more perfect than I could ever imagine, little one. I can hardly believe you are right here, right now in my arms. It seems like the journey had taken forever and only just began. I was so afraid, my dear child, when the angel first told me about you. Finding out I was pregnant was shocking, shocking to me, your daddy, to my parents, to everyone who even remotely knew of your beginnings. People who didn't understand thought I was involved in some kind of a scandal. And there were moments I feared for our future, my future, your future. But all of that is behind us now, my dear. You are my special bundle of joy, my child, in ways I can't even understood and imagine yet. But maybe you already know that too. My little bundle of joy, you came specially to be our God living with us. There is much I am uncertain of. I'm so young and know little about caring for a child. This child. There are moments I'm nearly overwhelmed, overwhelmed. The promised Messiah, my savior, the Messiah that Israel has prayed for is here today and I'm his mother. What could prepare me that my baby boy was gonna be one day walking on water? My baby boy was gonna be my savior? The knowledge is sometimes too great for me to bear. Nothing could prepare me for what's ahead. But precious Jesus, Emmanuel, my God living with us, I wonder every day why God chose me to be your mother. I wonder, but never regret it. His ways are above my ways and his thoughts above my own. I don't know what the future holds for us, dear child, but I know that I will do my best to raise you to make you God proud, of us both. You have changed my life forever. You are my life story. How can I care for my savior and my Lord? I will cherish that calling always, never ever forget it. My little baby. So you've had a rough year. Maybe feeling alone. Maybe a little abandoned and wondering if God even care. God with us, our Emmanuel promised that he came to be with us. God wants to be intimately involved in our lives. He wants us to know his voice and follow him. In fact, he wants to be with us strongly that he went, that, that he sent his son, a part of himself to physically walk the earth and to be with us. Emmanuel is not just a personal name, but is the whole account of his origin and naming. It is not that Jesus ever bore the name Emmanuel, but that it indicates its role, bringing God's presence to us, to man. The phrase may be emphasized in the truth of the gospel that God became a human being in Jesus Christ. The name tells us that 
He is God and you are not far from him. He carries the fullness of God in his entity. Secondly, this name reveals to us that he is with us. He's with you right now in your situation. You might not feel him. It's not about the feeling and the emotions. It's what he promised that he will be with us. God is with us in our difficult situation. God is with us when you can't sleep at night. God is with you when you feel alone and overburdened. It doesn't mean he was with us or he will be with us for a short time. No, my friends, the Bible calls him God with us. He is right here with his children, with you and with me. Constantly, consistently. Just as Israel, when they journeyed through the wilderness, they couldn't always see him, but they enjoyed the presence of God with them. As in a cloud by day and a fire by night. In your cloudy moments, in your fire's moment, God is with you. In the same way, Christ is with us and even much more, he lives in us. Heavenly Father, thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus, for being our Emmanuel, for coming to be God with us. There are times in our lives when we can't feel you, but you are here with us. Help us to always remember that you promised never to leave us nor forsake us and that you are still God with us. Have a blessed Sabbath day. Bless, bless.